Ivan Pavlenko, From Family to Family, Chapter 3, Part 4.2, Marriage, read by Natalia Buzova. The wedding took place on August the 30th, 1946. The head of the wedding was Grisha, my father's third cousin, who was 36 years old then. The boyars were Uncle Andriy's hosts, Metrofan Hetmanin, Vasil Lulik, and Vasil Brokiv. The last two were simultaneously musicians. Uncle Andriy's Natalka was Drushka, and Uncle Peter's Hala was Svetilka. Sour cream, stewed potatoes with chicken jelly, jelly, milk, and sour were on the table. There was also a cucumber, tomato, and onion vinaigrette. We drank a glass of alcohol, had a bite to eat, and went for the bride on a young white stallion, which had been given to the collective farm at one time. Shura's mother at the wedding was Nastya Vinogradcha, and her father was Vasil Kumpan, who was her neighbor. Shura made vodka from beets. Neighbors brought milk for jelly, brought ready-made sour cream, pork head for meat jelly and goose for stewed cabbage and potatoes had been bought by Shura. Sour jelly was made from cherries. Nastya Halivets, who worked as a storekeeper, gave wheat flour from which, together with Nastya Rigorimna Vinogradcha and Maria Kumpanova, they baked wedding bread and decorated it with wyvern. Everything was as it should be, with the observance of wedding traditions and rituals. I was dressed in a black suit and a white shirt, and Shura was wearing beautiful wreaths with ribbons, an embroidered shirt, a white skirt, a corset, on top of which there was a good necklace, black high-heeled shoes, and she was tied with a rushne. This was how Nastya Rigorivna Venagracha, with whom she lived at that time, dressed her. She was very nicely dressed, and it was heard how they said, what a beautiful bride. Father and mother invited guests to the house. As soon as we crossed the threshold, our friends sang. Friends, young ladies, stand on the benches, give way to a young son-in-law. All the friends stood on the bench and I went to the bride. But next to her sat a boy of six. It was necessary to buy the place. I gave him a couple of rubles, after which I sat down next to the bride. Then the girl sold me a flower. I put something on the plate and my friends sang. The bride sewed a flower. She broke the golden needle. And he saw that it was from a periwinkle and he put the money on the plate. Then we were treated. There was sour cream on the table. The guests ate, after which the plates were empty. They took them away and put jello, then served stewed potatoes and cabbage with meat. Then they put milk jelly after it, sour jelly. Vodka was poured with each dish and served in two glasses going around the guests. Friends sang wedding songs. Between them and the boyars, a humorous song banter began. Friends sang. The friends ate, ate, the whole ox was eaten, there is nothing on the table, there are no bowls under the table. To which the boyars sang, all the friend is cross-eyed, and another one is noseless, and the third one is deaf, yet listening to the song. The bride gave something to them, and they, waving their gifts, danced in the middle of the house. And in the end, Shura and I treated everyone who was at the table and around the table. People drank and put money on the plate and gave something as a gift, a towel, a piece of cloth, a handkerchief. Svashka put everything in a sack. Then the friends sang, Oh, old man, give us some order. Remove from the table to free space. Because we've already sweated, we want to dance. Finally, everyone left the hot house and danced to the accordion and tambourine. At the end, they drank, sat down on the wagon and went home to the young man. The whole family was already waiting for us at home. They sat down at the tables. They drank, ate and congratulated us. In the end, Shura and I also had a treat. Everyone drank from the bride and the groom to the bottom of the glass and gave something. People had almost no money then. Uncle Maxim gave a piglet. 
other uncles and aunts whatever they could, mainly cloths and other weaving products traditional for those times. Uncle Peter was sitting silent and sullen, as if someone had run over him with a wheel. And when he drank a glass from the bride and the groom, he immediately left the table and went home. It was a demonstration of condemnation or my unsuccessful, as it seemed to him, marriage. Aunt Palashka followed him. Some people noticed that Uncle Peter had left without saying a word or farewell and looked at each other in surprise. And Uncle Maxim threw a line, let him go. His little children are crying. It was said in a deliberately serious tone with which the uncle always brought a smile to those present. It must be said that Uncle Peter was considered almost the head of our family. Besides, he was the richest man in the village. He sold clothes for people, kept a large apiary, caught and sold fish. He did not bring it to my wedding, although I hoped for his generosity. Uncle Peter liked to instruct others, but he himself did not have order in the family. He had married Palashka Kiseleva, not for love, but for profit. His father-in-law, had promised his daughter either land or livestock. But the Soviet authorities canceled all that, and it did not help. Two months after the wedding, Uncle Petro's daughter Halia got married to Ivan Andreevich Serituk. They say that the wedding was, by the standards of the time, rich. But Shura and I were not invited. Halia and her older friend passed by the yard, but did not enter the house. This, for family traditions, was something unheard of. Halia later admitted that her father had told her not to invite us to the wedding. Don't go to Ivan. He and Shura would not live together, because in a large family it is like hell. He didn't listen to Uncle Oleksii and me. Let him blame himself now. But Uncle Peter's predictions did not come true. I loved Shura. She was a good wife and hostess for me and a caring mother for our children. After marriage, my business got better. I grew in service and so did our well-being. Immediately after the wedding, Victor went to study in the ninth grade of Luchanska Secondary School. And Shura and I took up the household. Potatoes, beets, pumpkins, as well as corn and cobs and beans were gathered from both gardens. All in all, we collected more than we needed for sustenance, sustenance and feeding the bull. Victor and I had brought hay for the cow from the meadow at the beginning of summer. There was not only enough grain for us. Shura added corn meal to rye flour and baked such bread. One day, Ivan Andreevich invited me to visit Uncle Peter. He meant that he had asked a lot. We went there, and there everything was already prepared, as they say, on the highest level. Good vodka and snacks, including fried fish and honey. When we had already drunk, Uncle Peter shed a tear, saying that he was wishing me well, but it turned into an insult which he had regretted for a long time. After the visit, I often visited my uncle, sometimes on the occasion of the temple, village temple holiday, then on the day of Peter and Paul when he was born, then after another extraction of honey. 